If you'd like coaching, replay analysis, or a personal guide, or you're simply enjoying the content, please consider dropping a coin or two on Patreon. Thank you. Void Spirit started out on the first pick first ban basis, and after seeing a couple of weeks of the highest win rate, was subsequently nerfed in many aspects. What remains of the hero is a niche pick not unlike his Storm and Ember brothers. So let's find out when it is a good pick and how to utilize him to his full potential. In this match, at the moment, Storm is banned of course, and having last pick, my choice now gets narrowed down to either Ember or Void. Looking at the enemy composition, their biggest damage dealers are Shadow Friend and Drow, both of which don't like when heroes get in their face. And while Ember and Void have great get in your face initiations, Void has a slight edge when it comes to retreating back as needed, so he's the better choice here. Nevertheless, both heroes play very similarly, and in this match I'll play Void exactly as I would play Ember. From minute 0, my overall game plan goal is to build an early game initiator who would excel at controlling fights, forcing enemies to waste many resources to capture you, all while my own spectre continues to farm. This means that despite the fact that the more time passes, the more of the early game burst I lose, spectre becomes stronger and stronger and she'll eventually take over the damage dealing role while I'll begin building more towards utility. Now let's talk laning. Before we meet in the middle, I know two things. I can outlast hit him on early levels with right clicks, but he can secure last hits and harass with his raises fairly effectively. My lane plan is to force him to waste raises to last hit, so that he doesn't have spare mana to harass with it. For this purpose, Wand and Salve are great starting items for me, as I can start collecting charges from the better start, and have a way to heal up once he lands first few raises. Wand of course can be skipped to get battle faster, but I'm sure I can have Wand first and still have battle shipped to meet the 2 minute rune. Laning is pretty self explanatory. SF, unless skilled race, can only use right clicks, so I aim to create as many situations as I can where SF must choose either to last hit or deny, while I myself can use my spells to secure creeps as needed. And on moments where I can maintain the waves on my own high ground, I get even more leverage thanks to the innate mischance. Thanks and have fun. Once Shadow Friend begins using raises, I once again create a situation where he has to use raise to last hit, and at that moment attempt to dodge it. From here on now, the pattern pretty much remains the same. Force raise usage, then last hit as usual. Push hard before rune, get back and repeat. Until level 6, I use my spells sparingly, but when I do, I'll try to hit SF with them too, to slowly burn him down in preparation of my level 6. The aim is to collect experience and stack some camps, so that the entrance to the mid game is smooth. Now at level 6 I have two options, use my cooldowns to nuke down Shadow Friend, or begin farming my stacked camps. Considering SF does pretty much the same game as I, outright killing him will be hard because he just nukes the wave and leaves. I could however bring him low enough and attempt a kill with the next cooldowns, but that means camps will remain unfarmed and this strategy is countered by a single self. Against opponents that need to stay in the lane to farm, Void at level 6 is a threat. Against easy wave clears, you're best off doing the same. So, it's mostly rotating lane to jungle and looking out for good runes. Once you do collect a good rune, feel free to visit either of the side lanes to start weakening them in preparation of the minute 10 outposts. Surrender all hope to the Lord. Or, you can use the same rune, or even a bait of a rune, to attempt a kill on the mid laner too. And this is your game plan until the first serious objective, the minute 10 runes and outposts. For this, as a void spirit, you will definitely want to make a rotation to the sides. Chances are, you'll either get a kill, an outpost or both. Killing spree. Dyer's top tower is about to fall. Where you can go. Radiant just 
for I can be waiting. From that moment on, you'll want to play as a space maker. Boots of travel help a lot in that regard, and you can much more freely visit contested lanes, outpushed lanes, or just teleport to base and heal and return back. This much mobility and early game burst, we're making ourselves quite a problematic target, one for which the enemy will waste extra human resources to hunt down. All of this translates to the space for our spec tree, as is the game plan. Finished Whale helps to dish out team fight damage, and likewise, Yules will help set up chain locks or get out of the bad situation more easily. Considering at the moment most of our team feels quite strong, we'll be aggressively pushing in lanes and roaming across their jungle, looking to engage in skirmishes. Both myself and Puck is great for initiating combat, and that's what we'll be doing in between objectives. Of course, then we might be throwing their lowest priority heroes our way to keep us busy, but what we want is to seek out Drow. She's the base of their damage, and removing her almost always means one teamfight. If you can't locate Rao, we'll aim to kill the weakest target instead, but considering how many chain disables they got on their own team, as a void in this match, I'll try to have either Astral Step, Dissimulate, or just duels as means of disengaging if things go wrong. And if nothing of interest is happening, no immediate objectives or teamfights coming up, then and only then do you farm the camps in between action. So far, we're dominating the entire map, and the strategy of waiting for Spectre to become ultra farmed isn't even necessary. With our team's mobility, every single lane is always pushed, and any lone hero that comes out to farm has to retreat immediately. Adding Lotus Orb to your Demization Cube makes you virtually unkillable. Now you got 2 spells to disengage and 2 short cooldown items. The level 20 and 25 talents is just the icing on the cake, and with the additional Octarine pickup, you become immortal. At this point of the game, the match is pretty much decided, and this is where we'll end today's topic. I will leave you with the rest of the match. Thank you for watching, good luck.
Oh, yeah. 